My dear viewer, welcome again to the series of 40 Days of Prayer. I first want to start by apologizing for taking a break unexpectedly. Um, you know, as pastors, a lot of things interrupt us, and so I was forced to be away of this, out of this program for about five days. But I promise to make up for what has been lost. Uh, today uh, is day 28th in our series of the 40 Days of Prayer. And we are now in the sub-series of the third person of, the, of Godhead, the Holy Spirit. And we are looking, and we'll be looking the next few days on how, uh, or what is exactly the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives and how does he, you know, um, uh, become one of our helper. And so, we, and how can we you now use him in the, our prayer? So this is what we'll be looking at in the next few days. And so I want to welcome you to be part of this ministry, part of this program, and part of this worship moment. Before we begin, we, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the precious moment you have given us one more time to share in this moment of prayer. We invite you, Lord, to be with us. I invite you to be with my viewer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, day 28, we are looking at the divine helper. Now, the text which is guiding us in the first, uh, is, is the Gospel of John, chapter 16, and verse number 7. Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 16, and verse number 7, the Bible says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart... I will send him unto you. I'll read one more time. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, Jesus speaks to his uh, disciples and uh, he gives them the promise of the gift of the Father, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he tells them, it is good for me that I may go, because if I do not go, then the comforter will not come. You know, uh, previously he had told them that I am going, but I'm not leaving you as orphans, but one who is of the same kind as I is coming to you. And when he comes, he shall lead you unto all the truth. But now he, disciples were not excited that Jesus was departing. You see, you having stayed and having had an experience with a friend, a person that you have related closely on a personal level, and this person, not just one day, not two days, or a period of um, three and a half years, this little was their body. And so he tells them, I am leaving, I'm going, and, and where I'm going, you can't come. So this was not a, an exciting moment for disciples, and so they wanted to protest the departure of Jesus. But then Jesus Cheers them here. Look, my departure is not meant to be a disadvantage to you. In fact, it is good. It is better. It is important. It is expedient that I may depart from you so that then I can bring to you or I can allow the then person of God and to come and minister to you. And, and it cheers them, you see. This is very, very important because it's the comfort will not come and unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus is in charge of sending the Holy Spirit. God the Father was in charge of sending Jesus the Son. Jesus is in charge of sending the Holy Spirit. Now, this quickly takes us to the concept of the three in one, what we call Trinity. And, you know, I appreciate that many people stumble, many people struggle to appreciate how we use the term Trinity in the gospel, the term Trinity in the scripture and in the plan of redemption. You know, it's just a triune. It's, 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 it's a setup of three eternal beings who have come together to work together for the common goal of salvation of humanity. And they both share, you know, the privilege, the very special privileges of what can constitute or what can identify one to be God. So the attributes of God that are in the Father are the same attributes that are in the Son, are the same attributes that are in the Holy Spirit. And so but in this setup then, they all qualify to be called God. And so we are interacting not just with the power as many people think, but actually 
a person. And I want to declare here that the Holy Spirit is a being, is a person. Just like God the Father, just like God the Son. And so the Holy Spirit is a being, a person. And Jesus says, it is expedient that I may go and that he may come who shall be your comforter and he shall be with you. And in fact, verse number eight, it says, and when he is come, that, and you can even see from the, the, the text of uh, the King James Version here, uh, drawn from the Greek text, identifies the personal pronoun here is he, not it. It is not the power. It is the person. He will come. And when he has come, in verse number eight, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That the, the, the responsibility of the Holy Spirit upon coming was to reprove the world of sin, was to lead the world to see the wickedness of the sin and to reveal in, in, in totality the aspects of righteousness of God and the judgment of God. And we appreciate that when the Holy Spirit came, in fact, when you go to the book of Acts chapter 2, you see the power in which the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and the great things they did. In fact, you know, in those days, it was mentioned everywhere that the, the, the people who were followers of Jesus were overturning the world ups and down because they were now moved by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is something unique that happens when the power of the Holy Spirit has descended upon a Christian. And we are praying in these 40 days of prayer for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. That we may experience the power that was in the disciples. That we may experience the power that was intended to be in the church in these latter days. And we are here today in our 28th day in the 40 days of prayer talking about the divine helper so and so jesus says i am it's good for me to go that your helper may come and this one is of the same kind as i am you know i i i i, I I'll just move out of the sin bodily but then the privileges that you had the opportunities you had in me the advantages you had in me the resources you had in me will be in no way be removed from you. In fact, they shall still be with you because whoever, the one who is coming is just like me. He is the same kind as me, as myself. And so he then is our divine helper. In the absence of Jesus Christ in the bodily form, we have the Holy Spirit who does not manifest in a being in a, in a human form, like Jesus, but in the spirit realm. We are not able to see him by our eyes, but then he indwells us through the power of God. And I want to read one quote here from the best author, uh, Ellen G. White, and page of uh, the Son of Angels, uh, page 671. I love this quote. L listen to this. <clears throat> the Son of Angels, page 671. Uh, the author here says, The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that he could solicit from his Father for the exhortation of his people. The Spirit was to be given as a regenerating agent, and without this, the sacrifice of Christ would have been of no avail. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agents of the third person of the Godhead. It is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ has given his spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. Of the Spirit, Jesus said, He shall glorify me. Now, this Holy Spirit, the that person of Godhead, is the means through which the heart of sinners are made pure. As we worship Him this morning, 
or this afternoon wherever you are or this evening wherever you are. As you take a moment to pray this moment, I want to let you know that it is important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to be in your life, to allow the workings of the Holy Spirit, to heed the promptings of the Holy Spirit, because he comes to purify your heart. He comes to redirect your thoughts. He comes, in fact, you know, he is the one who makes our prayers meaningful before the Lord. He has a ministry over our lives. The Holy Spirit has come to minister to us that we may be qualified to be sons and daughters of God. Without the Holy Spirit, the ministry of Jesus is in vain. We are stayed in salvation. We are stayed at the cross. We have desires for eternity because of the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I want to pray this moment that you will allow the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. He leads us. He leads us into a revival. He works in our hearts to revive our hearts and our thoughts to be renewed that we can be connected with the Lord. It is important this morning to appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life and pray to God that you may be revived. Say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Like of the old days of disciples, that I can overturn the world upside down because then it is, would be me working, but you, God, in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. Join the world church to pray that God will help many people who are trapped in the world of backsliding to be revived with the Holy Spirit. Pray for Holy Spirit power to achieve victory over hereditary and cultivated tendencies to sin. Pray that you will be a faithful steward of your time and your tithe. Even though times are difficult, the Bible tells us that those who honor God, he will honor. And that we find from the second Samuel, in first Samuel chapter 2 verse number 13. We pray that the Holy Spirit can help us to be faithful stewards in both the time God has given us and also the resources, the tithe and offering. When last did you give tithe? How faithful are you in giving tithe? You can struggle as a human being, but you will not be able to be faithful until the power of the Holy Spirit works in you. And we are praying today for a sweet spirit of unity among the general conference sessions, delegates that are now almost starting and many and no no people are traveling to go for the session and we are praying that God will be in these meetings to make sure that he appoints for the church the men and women that are, will be filled with the spirit of God. Pray that God will help you as a person better understand the biblical teaching of Godhead and the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well as a deeper understanding of the personal nature of the Holy Spirit at work. I know, I know and I'm aware, there are those of us in the Adventist church that are still questioning the doctrine of Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are still of our ranks who are stumbling on this thing and seem that the devil is succeeding in, 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 in confusing people. But I, I also want to pray and request you to pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling to appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that they too may come to this knowledge that the Holy Spirit is not a power, is not a thing, but is a being that God has sent to us as a means of salvation, that they may take advantage of the presence of that person of Godhead in their lives for purposes of the salvation. So join with me as we pray together. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of this moment of prayer. We thank you for the presence of the that person of Godhead, the Holy Spirit, whom you have sent to come to be our helper. And Lord, that in him today, we, we, we live and in him today, we find our being through him, Lord. We are connected with you, the Father and God and Jesus Christ. And through him, we are forgiven our sins because he is able to intercede for us with groans that we cannot even understand. We thank you for this gift, O oh Father. And we pray today that, Lord, 
that you may forgive our sin, those who are struggling to appreciate the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Those who have taken him lightly and, and neglected him in their lives, Lord, we pray that we can forgive them and lead them to all the truth to understand that this is not just a power, but it is a being, it is God in us who moves us and convicts us of our sins. He who revives our spirit. The Lord, we can be revived today and we can be equipped even for eternity. We want to pray in a very special way, Lord, that as the general conference session begins, Lord, we pray that this power, the presence of, of God, in the person of Godhead, the, the then person of Godhead, may rest upon the convocation, may rest upon the congregation, the meeting and the general conference. And Lord, that he shall not allow the human beings to take, to have their way, but Lord, he shall move the congregation, he shall move men and women who shall be sitting thinking on how to get the best people for this church. The Lord, for the first time, we will say we are all content because of what the power of the Holy Spirit has done in our meetings for the general conference. We are praying the Lord, we shall move your church, not, not only for the general conference session, Lord, but for all the divisions, for all the unions, for all the conferences and the fields, for all the local church leadership, that my Father, the church shall be guided by thy spirit. We are praying even for our brothers and sisters who are not of the Adventist faith, but are part of this ministry. Lord, we pray for them. Lord, as we revive, as we revive them and lead them to know the truth, even through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We are praying for the seven member list that we have. Continue, Lord, visiting with them and encouraging them and reviving them as we revive us, Lord, and keeping them with the power of the Holy Spirit, that together we shall be prepared for the soon coming. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my dear viewer. Thank you for staying tuned. Remember to continue praying for the seven members that you are praying for. If you're joining us for the first time, just get a list of seven people. Continue praying for them. Number two, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, I request you just again to click that red button there that whenever time we upload this program, we shall be able to be blessed with them. Also, share with your friends as many as you can. Share with them that we all may bless on the Lord. Till tomorrow, may the Lord bless you.